Welcome to the Coffee Cafe, where we don't serve coffee, we serve food prepared by a vengeful ghost. I'm Z. And I'm Lisa. And this is School Mysteries, a series where we look into seven urban mysteries straight from your own classroom. Once again, the Gaku no Nana Fushigi, or Seven School Mysteries, are a collection of urban legends passed down from class to class, generation to generation, within the schools of Japan. Some might be familiar to you, some might be new to you. So let us know if you recognize any of these. We return once more to explore seven urban legends deep from the dark halls of the Japanese academe in this special episode of the Seven School Mysteries, episode four. Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> so, do you think that this is going to be one of those cursed episodes? Probably. Who knows what'll happen to anyone who watches this? Anyways, let's begin with hide and seek. Do you want to play the game? You know they say that playing hide and seek in the campus after school is the prime time for it. Why? Because the stakes are higher. Whenever students play it at this time, supposedly at least one of them will never be found. No matter how much you try to seek, even with the help of teachers or even the police, they will never be found again. Where do they go? Well, some say they got kidnapped, others say they got taken by spirits. But all I know is, you'll never catch me asking, do you want to play the game? When I first heard this, I was so mad when you wrote it, because it just made me remember you just lost a game. Yeah, you all lost the game. This isn't, again, a unique story to Japan, nor schools, actually, because I've heard the same story from multiple different folklores. This was also something that was just common at home. Like, I was told by my grandma to not play hide-and-seek past sunset, or else, like, oh, oh, something gets you. Again, there are many cultures that do say if you play hide-and-seek at a specific hour as well, you might get spirited away or taken away by monsters or kidnappers or etc. And it's one of those things, yeah, it makes sense. It is pretty dangerous to play a game like that at night, especially when you think of stuff in the past where you'd be playing in with forests. I, li- I lived near a forest when I was a kid, so like, I would have gotten lost in there. But the danger of hide and seek is the fact that if you're not found, you're not found. And that's the scary thing. There's an orphanage that I just remember this one story of one of the kids there where apparently he was playing hide and seek and he decided to hide in one of those uh, public transportation vehicles. Without realizing it, he fell asleep and when he woke up, he was in a completely different area and he was too young to know his address. So he was brought to the orphanage and unfortunately, no one has claimed to be his family. You think it would have been like too far? Probably was because apparently that vehicle went to a multitude of places which again echoes how dangerous hide and seek actually is without proper supervision from at least an adult. That's terrifying. Pretty terrifying. 4 p.m. book stock. Help me look for this book. It's not your typical textbook and nobody really knows who wrote it or where it came from but I heard that if you go to the library at exactly 4 p.m. you may get a chance to find it. There's no specific shelf, there's no specific category but they say that if you ever find the book you'll learn the history and future of any given person in school. It's sort of log of everyone who has ever attended here, past, present, and future. Who knows what kind of things we'll get to learn from it. I mean, who cares if you get cursed? Just help me look for this book. This one is definitely inspired by that one episode from Toilet Bound Hanako-kun. I was about to say that. But like, it's it's still interesting because this is also like fairly common. There's always like uh, something haunted about the library. But I also find it really fascinating that it's still something that comes up at 4 p.m. Not midnight, not witching hour, just 4 p.m. Yeah, if the 4 p.m. ghosts don't get you or like if you're not spirited away by the 4 p.m. staircase, this is probably where you'll end up. And if Toilet Bound Hanako-kun is anything to go by, hopefully the librarian is at least nice. And hot. What? What? <laughs> There are a lot of stories about the library specifically as well. So there's also an element of the library outside of 4pm where there is a magic book that does a specific thing. But this is a unique 
kind of story as well because it apparently records everything that a singular person does. You gotta imagine how big that library is to begin with. Or how big that book is. Must be thick. Yeah. Oh, although I am also fascinated that usually when it comes to these types of books, you associate them with more fantasy type things. Like, you know, magic and whatnot. So I, I like the horror spin on it. I do wonder, is there a section in that book where it shows you how you're going to pass or something? Because that would even be more terrifying. Yeah, true. The Flying Knives. I think I lost my apron. It was my favorite apron, too. Last I saw it, it was in the home economics room where we had cooking class. I decided to head back there before the school closed, and the school was already empty. That is, of course, until I got to the room. Deep in the darkest part of the room was a student, chopping up his own hand. He looked at me and smiled, put your hand out, before a knife flew across the room, almost piercing through me. So I ran and left everything, and if anyone asks, I'll just say, I think I lost my apron. This was a personal account from one of the websites that we found, right? Yeah, it was on a forum asking like, oh, what are your seven school mysteries? And like, oh, this happened to me. It's pretty freaky. Yeah, we had to change a few parts of the story because it was a personal account and we don't want to reveal the identity of this person if there is anything to go by because it was a very obscure website. Like, the original ghost was a girl, I think? Yeah, not to mention that there is technically a seven school mystery like this, except instead of this being... Uh, with a specific ghost person. It was just knives. Like, they would pass by the classroom, they'd look inside, and there were just knives chilling out. Like, they're floating around, having what looks like conversations and whatnot, and they just fly at you on their own. But this one has a sort of malice attached to it, because there's a person controlling it, instead of it just being random sentient knives. He s seemed friendly at first, from what I got gathered. Like, he seemed... Wasn't he asking you something? Yeah, it was that sort of thing, like, he just looked like another student. And, like, uh, there's no sense of, like, oh, he's here to do vengeance or anything. It's just like, oh, hey, what's up? Stop, stop, stop. Yeah, the reason why I bring it up is because what is their incentive to kill in general? Because it just seems like they're just out for blood. <laughs> I respect that, just straight up. Yeah. Anyways, I guess that's one reason why you guys should be careful in the school kitchens. Do you know what it means? When I went to the classroom at 4pm last night, I found the word coffee and YT written on the board. I didn't know what it was until I found World Anvil. Mysteriously, all my creative endeavors outside of school suddenly got organized. My writing, my world building, characters, all in one platform. And they say that if you use the code coffee and YT using the link below, you too can get cursed with unbelievable organizing and writing potential all in one platform for 40% off your first year. Gymnasium Hallucination who did you see? When you went into the gymnasium, did you feel dizzy? Are you having hallucinations? Rumor has it that if you go into the gymnasium when there's no one around, you may experience this, giving you the ability to tell the future. When the sensation kicks in, turn around. As you may see someone behind you, they say if you see a young child, you might get a small injury within the week. You might get a small injury within the next week or so, but if you see an older man, you might get into a major accident within the next year. And that's why I'm asking, who did you see? Once again, this is another story that was also in our school. It was a different school this time, so I was in grade school. And we were young though, so we were a little more susceptible to that story. The thing is, the gym was so new that it still smelt weird. Like, you know that weird varnish that they use on the... Furniture? No, 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 the floor. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because our gymnasium has this, like, a rubber floor to make things a little softer for kids. I get it, I get it. And every time I went there, because of the chemicals and the fact that it was not really well lit, some of us would have like migraines. I hated going there. And whenever I have that, those migraines, I would always like imagine some sort of ghost there. Because you tend to have migraines when you like feel a ghost there. Yeah, but like it was one of those things where I was always scared of going there. I hated going there, but it, it heavily reminded me of this story. Yeah, I mean, uh, but I do find it interesting that there is this specific hallucination with a specific consequence attached to it. Like, there's, if you see a young child, like a little ghost kid, 
you'll probably get nicked or something in a while, but if you see an older person, like a full-grown adult, ghost of maybe a staff member or something, who knows what you could get into? It's very specific. I do just wonder if, like, the only way for you to avoid that is that when you feel like something's behind you, just don't look, man. Just keep going. Run out. You don't have to find out. I mean, if you look, the likelihood of it being an angry PE teacher is still very high. That's true. And you started running for nothing. <laughs> he times you like, dude, that broke the school record. I should scare these kids more often. <laughs> the Midnight March. The school is a battleground. I don't mean because of the extra math homework. The land that the campus is built on was once the site of a major conflict during the war. Hundreds lost their lives on the very ground we stand on. After everything cleared, they built the school here, in memory of the fallen. But if you stay here too long, you may start to hear the echoes of marching men reenacting the very event they perished in. You may even get caught in the middle of it. Getting a chance to join in permanently, because the school is a battleground. This isn't a unique type of story, but given the history of war within Japan, as well as the fact that there is a similar spirit, or I guess ghost of spirits in Hawaii, right? Yeah, yeah, of soldiers, I think. Yeah, like soldiers specifically marching through sacred land. It's a very specific concept, and one that you tend to hear where populations of, uh, I guess, Japanese immigrants or Japanese people in general tend to be. That's true. Like, there's a lot of focus on what happens to those who've lost their lives during the war in terms of the afterlife. And how does that affect the places where they've lost their lives spiritually? It's an interesting thing to, like, think about. Yeah, there's actually a lot of yokai regarding Japanese warriors or war-torn people or just general soldiers and victims of war where their spirit manifests into something. I was looking into this one yokai, I forgot what its name is, but it should be on the screen right now, where essentially it is the haunted armor or weapon of a fallen warrior, and it just roams the lands. I think I've heard of that one. But it's interesting how it has managed to find its way as a school mystery, given the fact that it's something that I guess society would prefer to remove from the school setting. True, true. But at the same time, I guess history really does uh, make itself known. Hearing the school bell. Did you hear that? I thought I heard the school bell. I guess studying for finals is making me lose my mind. Huh. What do you mean I should be careful? Could you really go insane if you heard the bell at night? I mean, I've also kind of been hearing it even when I'm not at school. What happened to the last person who heard it? What do you mean he was never heard from again? It can't be a ghost, can it? Either way, I'm sure it's just my imagination. I'm probably just tired. Did you hear that? I love this one because our script actually has the words Bing bong, bing bong, bing bong, bing bong. I also love this one because first year college, I also had this problem. <laughs> I kept hearing the school bell everywhere because you can kind of faintly hear it where the dormitories are because of how close how close it was. It was one of those things where teachers are stricter in college, but it rings every 30 minutes, so it's not something you can ignore. But there was a period of time where I just kept on hearing it, and it didn't help that they used the same chime for a lot of businesses around the school, like say, the telephone company or um, some food places when they call you. It was the same noise, so every time I hear it, I'm just like, Am I late for class? It even happened, like, after we graduated. Like, it would just follow you wherever you'd go. And even if you're no longer in school, th that doesn't mean you're safe. That doesn't mean you're safe. You will still hear it. I feel like I've been Pavlov. Pavloved into, like, thinking you have to run every time you hear it. Yeah, like, your heart just races every time you hear Bing bong, bing bong. <laughs> yeah, so we kind of relate to this in that hearing the school bell in the middle of the night would drive us insane. Let us know what you think, though. Like, do you hear your school bell even when you're not at school? Does it drive you insane? Like us? <laughs> Let us know in the comments below. The Ghost Nurse. 
Wanna go see the nurse? No, not the one in an infirmary. The one that lurks around after school, pushing an empty wheelchair. They say she was in active duty when the school was turned into a medical facility during the war, and she tried to take care of as many people as she could before tragedy struck. It is said that her spirit still lurks in the school grounds, looking for her next patient. And if she sees you, she won't rest until you've met your appointment. Oh, what's that? You don't want to go because you're feeling sick? Do you want to go see the nurse? Silent Hill nurse. Silent Hill nurse. That's all I have to say. That's what I used as inspiration for the drawing. Smash. Absolutely. <laughs> Wasn't this one of the stories that you found as a personal account as well? It was either a personal account or this person said that, oh, I heard this from a friend of a friend. And rather than it being a whole urban legend or something, they actually like heard that, oh, it happened to this guy. Well, that's how urban legends work. Rather than it being just online discussions, it was actually one of those, I heard it from this guy who knew this guy that it happened to, that sort of thing. It wasn't necessarily something that was a school mystery per se when we found it. Rather, someone just mentioned that it was a school mystery in their school, but they focused more on their personal account of their experience with it. During our research, however, we have found a bunch of accounts where people just talk about their experiences with them, whether or not they just grew up with it or something happened to them relating to that. Kind of like SOS. Yeah, the Yamada Daini uh, elementary school incident. It was something that a lot of people have a memory of. People were talking about it in forums, not as just, oh yeah, this is a thing that happens in schools. Like, no, they have a memory of, yeah, that happened. It was even debunked. And if you'd like to see how it was debunked, you can check it out. But going back to the nurse, I do remember there were a few accounts of the said nurse, but the stories differ a bit. Like, one said it was like a military nurse who died because of the war. That is also fairly common as a trope in these types of stories. And, I mean, a ghost nurse is not... It's not a rare sight. Yeah. And uh, sometimes they pop up in the hallway, sometimes the toilet, sometimes even the, the infirmary, which makes more sense, actually. I'd be scared if they pop up in the toilet. <laughs> yeah, it's time for your appointment. Give me your stool sample. There was that one story where the ghost nurse was chasing down this guy, and he went into the bathroom to wait and he thought like oh it's early morning now right but why won't the door open and he looks up the ghost nurse is like looking down at him that's horrifying didn't get any privacy he's not free and he's probably stuck in time so about that sample of pee that you gave me earlier <laughs> that's horrifying never mind that's that's worse <laughs> and that was the cursed fourth episode of Seven School Mysteries. Leave a like or else you're cursed to forever hear your cutlery. Judge your outfit behind your back. Thank you again to our members, Butter, Shifter, and Dot Gamer Boy, as well as our graphic producers, Snick and Chiapat. We really appreciate it, and if you too would like to support us and what we do, consider joining our memberships. And if you want to see more Seven School Mysteries, check out this video right here.